American missionary nurse Nancy Wright Bull being taken into Atlanta's Emory University Hospital right there on a stretcher just moments ago. This is the final stop in her long journey from West Africa where she was infected with the Ebola virus with stops at a Portuguese air base, then in Maine before landing a few hours ago just north of the city. She was then transported in a secure ambulance from Georgia's Dobbins Air Reserve Base to Emory where she will be isolated, her treatment now ongoing. Hello, I'm Michelle Franzen in New York. Wright Bull joins her colleague, Dr. Kent Brantley, who also became sick while working with Ebola patients in Liberia. ABC's Marcy Gonzalez has their story. The second Ebola patient ever in the U.S. taken on this medical evacuation plane to Atlanta today. Missionary aid worker Nancy Reipel coming to Emory University Hospital for treatment, traveling 5,000 miles from Liberia where she contracted the disease. Nancy uh, is uh, able to walk around and really the good news was that her appetite started to return. Her condition and that of her colleague, Dr. Kent Brantley, who's also being treated here, both said to be improving. Doctors questioning whether an experimental drug they took in Liberia may have helped. Some experts say regardless, they are optimistic about their recovery. The fact that she's asking for her favorite Liberian dish is terrific news. Doctors say they're confident the disease won't spread here and they're taking every precaution. The ambulance used to transport both Ebola patients here will be bleached. All exposed fabric, blankets and sheets will be burned. And both patients are being kept in isolated rooms at this hospital, sealed off from anyone not wearing protective suits. At other hospitals around the country, the key is awareness, watching out for anyone with possible symptoms. At New York's Mount Sinai Hospital, a patient who recently traveled to the epicenter of the outbreak, West Africa, now being treated for fever and gastrointestinal problems, is in isolation as a precaution. The first thing we'd like to stress is that Odds are this is not Ebola. It's much more likely that it's a much more common condition. And here we're told Brantley's fever is going down as his colleague now begins her treatment here. Marcy Gonzalez, ABC News, Atlanta. Thanks, Marcy. We are joined live now from just outside Emory University Hospital in Atlanta by ABC's Aaron Katursky. Thanks for joining us again, Aaron. Can you tell us a little bit more about the kind of welcome that Wright Bull received at Emory? We saw her being wheeled inside. How long had they been preparing for this safe and secure transition? Well, the, in general, they've been preparing for years for just this kind of thing as one of only four hospitals in the nation with this kind of an isolation unit. But they've had a little bit of a rehearsal with her colleague, Kent Brantley, who's now in his third day of receiving treatment here and said to be improving with his fever going down. So uh, the staff is experienced at this point in handling an Ebola patient. But Wright Bull seems to be a little bit of a different case. Unlike Dr. Brantley, who seemed to shock everyone when he walked into this hospital, here on Saturday, you saw Nancy Wrightbull come in on a stretcher, so she is not quite as strong, it seems, even though her family has said her condition is improving. Erin, what do we know about the patient's conditions? I mean, obviously, we're watching file video of Dr. Brantley walk into that facility, and just moments ago, we saw Wrightbull being wheeled in that facility. Do we know any differences in their diagnosis? We don't know specifically because of the family's request, no information is being given out and HIPAA laws would prevent the hospital from giving any specifics. But generally we're told that Nancy Wright Bowl isn't quite as strong as Dr. Brantley. They were each given a dose or two uh, of an experimental drug and though their conditions seem to have improved after that, doctors aren't sure that's the drug or whether that's simply their bodies fighting off the infection as best they can. And that's really what's going to be key for, for Nancy Wright Bull getting better here, making sure that her vital signs, her breathing, her blood pressure are all as strong as possible so that her body can fight off the Ebola that's now swimming in her system. And with all of this going on with these two colleagues that have worked side by side, give us an idea about the families surrounding them and their support. We understand that they've also been in touch these past 24 hours. They met for just the first time here at the isolation unit last night and were told they sat together and shared a prayer. 
Dr. Brantley's family has been asking for prayers for Nancy Wrightbull, and Wrightbull's family, we're told, was extraordinarily grateful for that. And uh, these are our missionaries, and, and they are a people of deep faith. And so their prayers are really helping the families get through this awful time with a, an infection that kills 60% of people who contract it. So everybody here is praying for the best, and that seems to be holding the family together. And, and for Brantley's family in particular, they were euphoric, we're told, when they saw him walk into the hospital on Saturday, and they've been riding that high for the last several days. Wright Bowles family has said that her condition is improving. She does have an appetite, but as you saw, she was brought in on a stretcher, so not quite uh, at that level of strength. And we want to bring in ABC's Dr. Richard Besser, who's joining us also again. You watched as uh, Wright Bowl was wheeled in on the stretcher. What do you think is next for her as this uh, sort of triage unit surrounds her now for treatment? Yeah, you know, I wouldn't read too much into how she was transported. You know, clearly, it, it's a sign that she doesn't have the strength to, to walk in on her own, but it, it may be no more than that. With, with Ebola, you can get very dehydrated. Uh, you know, the, she just has come through a very long, arduous trip from, from Africa. Uh, so it, it will be very important to listen to their press conference this afternoon when they talk about her condition. The information that we, we've received recently about her and her appetite is a very positive sign. Uh, but it may be that with this illness over the, over the past week, uh, she just has, has lost the strength and is not walking for that reason. And, you know, the medical officials here, you said that they're very capable. Uh, this university in particular, and also not too far from the uh, CDC. Give us an idea of, of what they're going to be looking for. What sort of learning experience could this be for them with this deadly virus? Yeah, I mean, just as, as a disclosure, I was on the faculty at Emory and I'd worked for years at the CDC, uh, but I think she's at a very good place. A very strong group of infectious disease doctors at, at, at Emory University. Uh, and the CDC is right there. I, one of the things they'll clearly want to look at in, in both of these individuals is how long can they uh, isolate uh, Ebola from, from them because they will not want to release them into the community uh, at a, until they are comfortable that they pose no risk to, uh, to their families or, the, or those around them. You know, Dr. Besser, we've heard of these cases. These are isolated cases, of course, coming back here to Atlanta. Is there any concern widespread publicly here in the U.S. of the Ebola virus, or is it uh, pretty well contained in how it's come here? Well, I think that the, you know, the reports we've been hearing uh, yesterday, today, about hospitals uh, having patients tested for Ebola, patients who've been to West Africa, uh, this is very good news because what you want to see is, is a heightened sense of, of, of alert and awareness, that hospitals ask people who come in who are sick if they've traveled, if they've been to this area, if they've had any possible exposure to people who were ill with Ebola. Uh, those people are isolated and they're tested. That's what you really want to see. I would not be surprised if we saw a case of Ebola here or in some other country uh, among someone who had been in the region. And the reason for that is it can be in your body for up to three weeks before you show any symptoms, any signs of disease. So someone could travel healthy and then arrive somewhere and get sick. That's why it's good news that people are looking and testing. Can you give us an idea of what sets apart the Ebola, Ebola virus from other similar viruses with the same symptoms well this is i mean th this is a virus that jumped to jumps to people from from an uh, animal uh, reservoir and it, it initially can look like many diseases from the area. You present with fever, body aches, headache. Uh, it then moves in to, to cause problems with your liver and kidneys. Uh, and in some people, it causes internal and external bleeding. It, it, uh, it's a very deadly disease. And those who do poorly, they, they tend to die very quickly. So it's a very good sign that, that both of these uh, Americans uh, are still with us and that the words are that they are improving. And Aaron Kotursky back in Atlanta. Give us an idea about what you are hearing there on the streets and neighborhoods. Are there is there a big concern for people as they deal with this Ebola uh, cases coming to their city? 
Well, the infectious disease experts here at Emory said they were aware of some of the concern, and the CDC said they heard some of the concern that was expressed, a lot of it online, but, but some of it just as you talk to people questioning whether it was the wisest idea to bring Ebola willingly into the United States. And the CDC has taken this as a moment of education to suggest that it is not easily spread, that you can isolate the patient and therefore contain the bodily fluids burn all of the insides of the ambulance uh, that were used to line the walls of the ambulance, and, and it can be done safely. And now uh, she'll only be talking to her family through protective glass for the foreseeable future. But I have to tell you, if there is fear among the community, there was also a great deal of curiosity. As the ambulance arrived uh, right here at the hospital, many of the doctors, the nurses, the staff members, people on their lunch break came out to the sidewalk to just catch a glimpse of the motorcade as it drove by. There was a multi-vehicle convoy. This one was under police escort, unlike on Saturday with Dr. Brantley. They said it's just a little bit busier on a weekday. The ambulance drove right past the usual ambulance bay by the emergency room and into a specially cordoned off area. And Dr. And, uh, Nancy Wrightbull was taken up into the isolation unit on a stretcher. ABC's Aaron Katursky on the scene in Atlanta. Thank you again, as well as Dr. Richard Besser for joining us. You can keep up with this story in real time by downloading the ABC News app and starring this story for exclusive updates on the go. For now, I'm Michelle Franzen in New York.